and the same this this hole is like interesting in the way that like i again me and probably there's probably like six other pros maybe more than that six other pros that could like get it more than half the time i would say on this hole like i, I don't i think if you put kim scott wood who is like a really really good player like or, or even marty like i don't think that they'd give themselves a 50 50 chance on this hole to get the birdie and i think that could be a little bit extra punishing so i don't know where you could perhaps move the basket to make it either a challenging par four or slightly move it to have a slightly more gettable par three that gives gives people like a chance to get it because like for me i feel like with my arm i'm like one of the only people that really has like a good chance of putting it close enough to make the putt other than this, unless people are just throwing it in but that's not necessarily a good hole design if you have to throw in birdies um for like i, I would say like tw around 20 percent or so of the field should be able to kind of get a look at birdie at least like it, it doesn't have to be 20 percent that get the birdie because obviously those 20 percent might not all be the best putters so like having a hole that they can reach but we'll still challenge them on the green it's so like necessarily it'd be like maybe 10 10 percent birdie on like a more difficult par three like this one but i don't even think this this is getting close to 10 percent birdie rate at the moment if you took like all the players that have played it so far all right i'm gonna throw the d2 nice and wide hopefully have it fade in right at the right time Oh, way too much. I mean, that's going to be another long, kind of like jump putt approach, half run type shot. Just because I threw it a little too wide and didn't get the left movement to the green. All right. I think that's a big part of. Uh, like disc golf as well people love to kind of push the blame on other things like someone making the smallest noise ever or like i don't know standing 20 feet away from them instead of 25 feet away from them i don't know there's a bunch of excuses some of them are pretty creative actually but honestly i think a big part of like also just accepting and learning from your shots is just taking taking responsibility I threw that too wide and on, and too flat, so it straightened up and didn't get the left movement needed. And that was my fault, you know, the distance fault or anything. I know that distance ability and didn't throw it quite right. over that way I could have given it a harder run but as well it's like keeping it close to the basket because and I don't want like a comeback or also like the chance if it hits the rim it has enough energy to roll to the bunker that'd be a bad mistake to make but I do want to try to give it a little bit more run like, that was pretty soft as you can tell it came up short favorite hole now because I mean just look at the hole right here like if you want to like just take a video of it and like frame it up it's a pretty it, it's it's a good gap like it's a good size gap it's not super super hard to throw through but as well like keeping it through that gap because that means you have to go down the middle and there's like these row of trees so to throw it down turn it to the right a little bit and then finish pretty and I think it's a lot further than it says I would say it's at least 450, maybe like 460 something as well. Or at least it plays that way with a slight uphill grade as well. Um, so my, my advice would yeah be moving it to the other side of the river 
or of the little pond there and making a par four because like if you can throw it past those trees it's a really easy approach shot and you should be able to swing it wide and kind of spike it in for a pretty consistent birdie but if you're like shorter kind of in these trees you'll have to mess with that and make the decision of whether you want to cross or not laying up for the par or going across risking the birdie and honestly with like the the kind of obstacles on this fairway I think that plays a lot better than just like because even if you hit some of these trees or, or, or in some of these obstacles it's a pretty easy like jump putt or an approach for um, a tap in three which isn't really that much challenge and as well like someone who has a great shot and is in circle two and misses that putt like they're still going to get a three and so I think there's not that much score separation other than the mandos which for kind of like pro level players shouldn't be too difficult to hit. I'm gonna go with the D1, the Paige Pierre signature, and a few people were asking about that. That's what it looks like with the PP. This is back when Paige was sponsored by Prodigy, kind of. I think it was like 2013 to 2015 or 16, I want to say. But yeah, nice stable one to throw into the slight headwind. That was a really good drive, and I bet you I'm not that close to the basket. And that's like me throwing a pretty good drive as well. Just to boost my ego. A little bit left. That would have been a really good two. Oh yeah. And then, from there, I would like to see the basket probably like right around him. like on that kind of hill right there it's a little bit higher than that so it gives a little bit of elevation challenge but also brings that tree into play for anyone coming in from the right side and also yeah I'll make that decision play whether you want to cross over onto that green or you want to stay here and then just have a shorter chip shot on your next shot all right that is my advice. The new course, Scarlet Woods, I actually designed a little bit of that um, there as well. Just because like Jeff and Kara, they asked me to come out with the city to kind of uh, see what the, the holes were like. And so some of the tee positions as well. I kind of had some like feedback in just because like they're in positions where uh, I would open a certain shot up or um, also just like with the tee in the area they didn't want people to like be kind of pivoting on the golf tee. So, oh, it's right here. I don't know where I'm going. So this hole, I almost feel like I don't know. It's it's so tricky because you want to use these trees, like you want to be able to throw, have make players throw through them, not just spike it over them. But looking at it, I have to see maybe over there there's be a tee pad possibility. But it's hard to say from here. But for now, I'll just throw the spike hyzer over top. And hope for a nice close shot. Still caught that tree. Really? I'm gonna throw one more. One more coming in. Swinging. Not that side up. Ooh. Going down the hill. That's always one of the funny things as well, like when you're on coverage. You can watch the camera and kind of tell where your shots are going. RPM disc. 
Can you came up a little bit? I'm almost in the exact same spot. Huh? Yeah. Oh, cutter flick. Here's where that second one ended up. Yeah, I was like, to go a little fast here. Mm -hmm. Not a bad fire. I do think it should bring in the trees a bit more but honestly like with the way that my hyzer came up short that's not a bad way to kind of bring in the trees either and i think certain players who can't throw it over top might have to go more up the middle anyways so i kind of take my feedback back i i think it's not a bad hole i think it, it, it's just it's a shame like there there's these big beautiful trees and you kind of want to utilize that on a course as much as possible but Challenge wise, it's yeah, it's not a bad hole at all. Alright. <laughs> it, it that's like the main part of it that made me kind of like wanna see if there's any kind of change to use the trees a bit more because that like that is a really big feature of like disc golf is like the utilization of trees as obstacles and that it's not really like used uh, like full to its full effect here. I kind of want to try what I had like said earlier is like just try to throw like way high and then land left of the tree so that would open up the, the upshot for an easier easier look at it. I think I'm going to try that. Why not? I mean, and honestly, that's like not a bad design at all. If you make players, force players out to that side because they don't have the power to kind of like spike it over top like I do. Like that's a good kind of challenge for those type of players. Me being, just having a different kind of skill set can do that kind of shot. And that's honestly not a bad thing. Like I've worked really hard to gain that distance to give me that advantage. And forcing other players to do Certain things is just kind of part of the game, I guess. That's an easy birdie. Did that, did that shot surprise you at all? Coming to the left side of the tree? That's what I originally thought you'd do the first round. I know, I thought, I, I mean, yeah, Casey was saying, like, yeah, I just want to push it out straight. You don't want to go left out into the trees because it'll make it harder. But, yeah, I that's, coming that's out way wide easier. around the tree with a big overstable disc and then trying to work up the left was bad. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that was way easier. Yeah. Way so, easier. Put... I don't think many can do that, though. No, yeah, that's Not what I was saying. Not getting enough distance to make it worth it. Yeah. Great Alright, so what were you saying about the hole? Um, I like the kind of like island hey, feel like you can't come up short of it. if you get it in. Ugh. <laughs> I have to change up my game plan. How many, how many attempts does he get? One chance, 20 bucks. One? I'll tell you what, I'll double it, but give him three. I'll throw a 22. I'll do 20. Give him three shots? Give him three shots. Okay. Right, I'll play my first shot like for the hole, okay. and then I'll, I'll give two ace runs. Just for the 
normal playing of the hole. And then now I'll do the fun little ace run. Hopefully. No, no, that was the layup. That was just to get an easy birdie. Now these are the ace runs. Hopefully. Need in between the two. I'll give you one more. Okay. Um, what do you got? One more, Thomas. Oh, I turned that over. Yes. No. Oh, good try. Yeah, oh, thanks. That was fun. Thanks. You should see me on another hole. <laughs> First one I thought had the line, but it was just a little low. <laughs> nice easy birdie. That's how the hole should be played. I think it's a good hole. I think it's a little short for how big the island is. But I mean, obviously, I don't know, two pretty good players this morning um, had a bit of difficulty on it. So it's not, not a bad design at all. All right, the same putter though. Kind of a little bit of height and have it kind of skewed. And easy. So like as well, one thing that I was kind of thinking about, and I don't know if I can do it or not. Um good this to try it with. Something like uh, something like this. I I'm kind of curious how close I can get a jump putt being in bounds. So I think if I can get a jump putt in bounds, it's way too short. barely but I, I would I don't know where you could put it maybe like back there or something I don't know, it's hard to say but I do think for the size of the island it's a little bit close you see I was testing out this shot just to see if it was, island was so close that you could just jump out onto it but it's not quite that close but I think it's a bit generous he jump out of that But as well, like that's um, kind of like what I was saying earlier, having a gimme hole like this on a course is good because it adds that extra bit of pressure where it's like, I have to birdie this hole or else like I'm losing strokes to everybody. And if you're, if it let that get you to you so much that you miss the island completely, then you might be giving away two strokes to the rest of the field instead of just the one. So in that way it's good, but I do think it's slightly too gimme-y, I guess. 